Why did Apple switch from Intel to ARM processors? And what does this mean for consumers? Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So there are a lot of reasons as to why Apple would ditch Intel for ARM processors, and the biggest main reason here would be money. See, with every single sale that Apple makes, they have to pay Intel a little bit of money because, of course, they're paying for those processors to put in their laptops to sell to people. Now, on the other hand, when they go to ARM, they only have to pay a license fee because Apple makes their own ARM processors, so that gives them way more money for each purchase, and to them, it makes a whole lot more sense. They can get way more margin off of every single sale. Now the next reason is that Apple's been waiting on Intel to advance their processors in terms of power efficiency for a really, really long time. See, Intel's been stuck on the 14 nanometer process and the same Skylake architecture for what seems like ages now. And unfortunately, as their competitors such as TSMC have been moving down further and further, they've gone from 14 or 16 nanometers, somewhere around there, to 12 to 10 to 7. Now they're on 5 nanometers. Compared to Intel's 14 nanometer process, even though they're not directly comparable, TSMC has a way more advanced process that is much, much more power efficient, and that's what these ARM processors are developed on. So this gives a huge edge to mobile devices, which is a lot of Apple's sales. Talking about power efficiency, that brings me to my next point. Over the last couple of years, we've seen how Apple's put out products that have had severe throttling issues, and this is because of what I talked about earlier. And on top of that, Apple likes to make really slim, sleek designs. They don't like to put a bunch of cooling in there. And so as Intel's been strapping more and more cores onto this aging process and needing higher amounts of cooling, Apple hasn't been willing to do it. And unfortunately, we've had cases where a two or three gigahertz processor has been throttling all the way down to one gigahertz, which is honestly really bad. There's a bunch of performance left on the table, and I think Apple's looking at all of that. They're looking at the negative reviews and going, all right, we need to do something about this. We really need to continue to get power efficiency much, much better, and Intel just isn't keeping up. And the final reason as to why Apple's doing this is because they want to build an even bigger walled prison. Not a walled garden, a walled prison, because it keeps people out and it keeps people in. Once you're in their ecosystem, it's really hard to get out. And and once you're in their ecosystem, you're buying all their products, all their software, etc. So honestly, they really want to get everything to be the same. They want their mobile devices such as their phones, tablets, etc. and their MacBooks to all be using the same processor so they can all have the exact same lockdown software with the same ports so they can sell you all of their proprietary stuff, and it gives them a whole bunch more money. And honestly, it makes a whole bunch of sense for Apple as a company. But those are just the reasons that I believe they are doing it. Here's what Apple has to say. For over a decade, Apple's world-class silicon design team has been building and refining Apple SOCs. The result is a scalable architecture custom designed for iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch that leads the industry in unique features and performance per watt and makes each of them best in class. Building upon that architecture, Apple is designing a family of SOCs for the Mac. This will give the Mac industry leading performance per watt and higher performance GPUs enabling app developers to write even more powerful professional apps and high-end games. So what does this mean for performance? And does this mean that ARM is going to finally overtake the Intel x86 architecture? Or is everything going to stay relatively the same? Well, you'll notice that in this little post they put up here, they never mentioned outright performance. They always talk about performance per watt. And let me tell you, performance per watt is absolutely the most important metric when it comes to silicon. However, raw performance is different from performance per watt. You can get a huge performance per watt gain, yet you can still not have the highest performance chips. And I think that's what we're going to see here. ARM processors are really, really great at doing low performance tasks for a really, really small amount of power draw because they can shut off different cores really, really fast. They can have low power cores doing like just audio stuff. Whereas on an x86 processor, for the most part, they typically have all a bunch of big cores, and while you can sort of shut down cores and clock them down when you're not using them, it just doesn't get near the same efficiency. However, x86 processors are capable of instructions that these ARM CPUs simply cannot do. 
And so what that means is that there's a bunch of performance that ARM CPUs probably will never achieve. It's really hard to scale up ARM processors. I know it seems like you just shove more power into them, but unfortunately that's typically not how it works. Now, could an ARM processor eventually beat an x86 processor? Yes, it could, but it would take a bunch of work, a bunch of software development, and we just simply don't know. And based on the past attempts of Microsoft and others to make ARM-based laptops, it would seem to me that it's more likely that we're going to see that x86 will continue to stick around and continue to be the top dog in terms of performance, but the power draw is probably going to continue to rise. But mobile devices such as laptops, tablets, and phones are going to start switching over completely to ARM, all of those things, because honestly, for laptops, it makes a whole whole bunch of sense to have an ARM processor if you can get the software right. And that brings me to software. This is a huge problem with ARM processors. Like I talked about earlier, Microsoft and others have tried this before. And the biggest problems were not only that these processors, these ARM processors just simply can't get as fast as x86 desktop class processors. But on top of that, unfortunately, there's a bunch of software work that needs to be done. And there were apps that would just not run at all. There were some apps that ran really, really poorly. And this is something that Apple's going to have to get around. And they have enough sway in the industry that I believe they're going to get a lot of application developers to go on their side and develop apps that work really, really well for these processors. But I just don't know at the end of the day how it's going to stack up against a modern x86 processor in a laptop we'll just have to see when it comes out but i think as time goes on we'll see them get very very close and it'll get to a point where if you're using a laptop it'll probably just make more sense to use an arm processor hopefully as the software continues to get better and better and i believe that if anyone can do it apple probably can so overall Honestly, I think this is a good move for them. But hey, that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this is a good idea for them? Or do you think that this spells the end for Apple? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll try and get back to as many of you as I can. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.